joy of good living. Move up to quality. Move up to Schlitz. Move up to Schlitz. The beer that made Milwaukee famous. Hi, boys and girls. It's me. And welcome to my repair lair. We're downstairs, and it's uh, a little bit cold. And uh, see, I don't remember the temperature here. Let me get, the, get it up on it. The... There we go. I don't know how well you can see that. There we go. I just showed you. Yes, it's tough out here. But then again, I guess people that are in uh, North Dakota and Michigan and folks up in Canada are probably just saying, you know what? Welcome to my world. <laughs> it just typically doesn't get that cold here. So, first of all, let me wish everybody a happy holiday season, a very Merry Christmas, uh, happy Hanukkah, and a Festivus for the rest of us. I make sure I try to cover all the bases here. I want to show you what I brought home for Christmas. Now, typically, I, I think of Christmas as uh, a way to reflect our Lord and Savior and uh, it's about family, and, and, and uh, I, lo I love giving and, and seeing the, the, the faces of people as they react. Um, if you've, you haven't watched the video of the uh, Christmas party that I put up, and it's also on the NJARC uh, uh, YouTube web, web page, and I'll put a link on the description of this video so you can see that as well. But uh, I did. I did actually come home with three radios. That's never happened unless I go on a spending spree. And these days, with the economy and as tough as things are, that just very, very rarely happens here anymore. So, let me show you what uh, followed me home. Where you are, I hope you also are having a good meal and a few drinks and a few laughs. But uh, we we do hope this is working out for you. Uh-oh. 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 I know what this is. Uh-oh. This is. It's a 3030 S120. S120. Bob. <laughs> the price is right. <laughs> so here's the radio that I had picked uh, during the game. I just, of course, I had no idea that, you know, these are all gift wrapped and everything. So I had no idea what was in the box. So uh, I opened it up and I saw this. I, I kind of laughed at myself. And I, you know, I know, I know this belonged to somebody and this was their gift. But this... Uh, UCS 120 Halicrafter, uh, uh, these are kind of entry-level radios. They're 4.2, but I think with a selenium rectifier. You just don't see, you know, people going, diving into these things unless they find one in really nice condition. Um, this one's kind of dirty. I even said it was dirty. I probably probably shouldn't have said it because it is it is what it is. As you see, it's got the... Uh, 200 mile per hour NASCAR tape holding the uh, cord in place here. And at one time, I think it was for sale, and uh, as you can see, it had red crayon uh, scroll through to 25 because no one would give it, give $25 for it. But for the most part, it's all there. Uh, the cardboard back isn't perfect, but it's just a dirty S120. And uh, this is, I guess, the side of the speaker. There's a lot of scratches and everything. But you know what? In the grand scheme of things, I mean, my experience with these is that they're they're rather mediocre on the uh, broadcast band, but they're really they're they're not too bad on shortwave. And uh, you could still, uh, you know, pick up sideband, upper and lower sideband with the BFO. So it's you know, it's 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 not a POS radio. Let's just put it that way. But it is kind of a Entry level uh, radio, just for grins and giggles. Let me get my Variac, and I'll peel off the uh, the NASCAR Go Fast tape here, and we'll see if it actually does anything. Okay, we're kind of all hooked up here. Uh, I've got it on the got the Halcrafter SS120 on the Variac. Uh, you can see up here in this display. I don't know how well that's coming through, but this is the current draw. This meter here is the actual voltage. 
Uh, I have the radio turned on. It's on the broadcast band. I have the volume currently all the way up. The uh, switch is set for receive. BFO is off. Uh, the tuning knob is kind of stiff. I moved it. I just moved it a little bit. And the radio is connected to half of my 40 meter dipole. So let's see. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to just start gradually bringing this up. Oh, wait a minute. It helps if you plug this in. All right. We're starting to come up. I don't know how long this thing sat, so um, it's not showing any draw of the current. The, the current meter has not moved at all. All right, up to 70 volts, 80 volts. Okay, something is definitely awry here with the radio. This radio is turned on. See, that's off on. And my current is not moving at all. Um, this could be the reason why it's broken. So here's the plug end, and here was the other end of the radio, and this cord was just wrapped around the radio. So the radio had no power, so... Uh, <laughs> It's definitely a fixer-upper now, uh, so we know that there's something going on. There's something awry with the radio. Actually, at the very end of the game, uh, Miss RW got to pick anything she wanted uh, from all the all the gifts that were already uh, out there. So I kind of had to go up to her and say, hey, go grab this box over here. And in the box, I, I wanted to rather get some more big, uh, bulky tube radios, which I have plenty of right here. I saw a couple transistors, but one of them was rather unique, and I've only seen one other one, so I, I asked her to grab the the box. So here was the first transistor in the box. I'll bring this guy out and get so it's not too, uh, just a little bit of a shine against the light here. Uh, this is an RCA Victor radio. I, I don't remember. It's a 4X something. Here, let me take the cover off the back here. That's got the model number right on there. There it is, 4RG62, and I believe the date of manufacture was either 62 or 63. And uh, it's an A transistor. Can't really see too much from the back here. You see, it takes four AA batteries. And uh, th there's one thing that that's really unique about this radio that I really like. Now, here's the thing: RCA transistors, the early stuff. They were okay. They weren't uh, DX machines. They they really uh, weren't all that sensitive, and they certainly are not selective. But um, from here, I was still able to get uh, AM740 out of Toronto and AM900, which are both Canadian stations, CKLW. Um, but you know, it just it's not a, it's not really a good DX radio. What really thought made me. Uh, get excited about this radio. Let me know if I turn this light off Here you can see it a little better. See this little button in the upper left hand corner. You hit this button I don't know how well. Oh, I got to turn the radio on We keep on giving Tampa Bay the benefit of the doubt. I know it's easier with Tampa Bay I don't know how well it's division. coming through um, when I press the button the beat the Bears It's actually got a dial Rams. light that's backlighting The dial is that neat? But watch what happens when I turn the radio off. It also works off the dial light switch here. So I like that feature a lot. I wish more of the early stuff had the, the dial light because I like listening to stuff at night. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's just nice to be able to see what you're doing without having to turn off a flashlight or whatever. But uh, this has this little thumb wheel here to do the tuning and you also have another thumb wheel below for volume to reset your body to take over the house like the enemies both people right you can see it's pulling in the new york stations quite well um it's got a little handle on top um the only thing the radio was working when i got it and i i got a little little thrown here as you can see, I have these four Kirkland uh, AA alkaline batteries here. When I first went to turn this on, I had literally this battery that's in my left hand here. And 
it was like this, but I, I didn't really give it much. You see how the, the covering is a little bit peeled off, peeled off here? I don't know what's up with that. But I had had this in the radio, okay? And these are all, they all go positive. This is I'm holding the radio, the positives on this side, on all four of these, negative on this side. I had that in indexed properly with the positive right there. The radio initially turned on. The volume was probably not as high as it could have been. So, you know, that's fairly easy. I, I checked all the caps on here and I found uh, three of them that needed to be replaced. But anyway, this battery got so hot and I've never seen that before, but this is just how I, I pulled it out of radio and I probably pulled it out of a box that like that, but I never, uh, you know, never really noticed it. I'm, th you know, I went to grab the radio to start. I was going to start tearing things apart and checking capacitors and stuff. This battery was so hot I couldn't touch it. I went to grab it and I wanted to pull the batteries out. And then as soon as I touched this battery, I almost burned the tip of my finger. This thing was red hot, and I never seen that. Now, I didn't think there was a problem with the battery. I thought, well, maybe there's a shorted capacitor or something strange going on here. Um, but why was the radio still playing? Well. Apparently there was something defective within the battery. I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I, the people I told the story to, well, maybe it was a Monday or a Friday battery. I don't know. <laughs> you know, ever you get a car, you can go out and spend like small fortune on a new car, and then there's you know, something wrong with it right off the jump. So uh, anyway, this you know, even though this thing is dated, it's got a date here, March 2031. There's something seriously wrong with this battery. So it, it's. Uh, right in the garbage with this. So I took this guy out and I changed three electrolytic capacitors. Um, now I, I had them saved here, but I think that uh, maybe one of the kitties got up on my bench during the night and knocked them on the floor somewhere and I'm not gonna try to dig them out. So I just drew this little diagram here. This was a 30 micro, there was actually three 30 microfarad capacitors. I think two of them were rated at 16 volts, and I think one was ready for 6 volts, or some, some ridiculous number like that. But the one cap was kind of interesting. It had a negative, but then two positives. So there was literally two capacitors in one package, and it was kind of like that. So, uh, I, of course, I didn't have anything like that, so I put in conven conventional uh, low-voltage electrolytes. And uh, after doing an alignment, um, there were three IFs, uh, I'm trying to remember where they were at here. Uh, one, two, three, there's, there's three holes here. Let me get a pointer so you can see them a little bit better. I'll put this light back on, maybe that'll help things out too. So I don't know how well this is coming through, but there's a hole here where I got the end of the pointer. There's a hole here and a hole here. So I basically, just like you would do a tube radio alignment, the, now I do my alignments a little bit weird, a little bit different. Um, one one guy that he's no longer with us, unfortunately, but he was a, a radio engineer. He went to the RCA school for uh, learning how to work on this stuff. He he used to do it on harmonics. So these are 455 KCIFs. So what I do is I tune the radio to 910, which is a first harmonic of that, and then tuned it at 910 with, with these three guys. And then of course, conventionally, like you would do a uh, another radio, I had this out of the way and I had a couple of uh, clip leads in here and then an AC voltmeter. And then of course, peak, peak the three IFs. And this actually isn't too bad. It, like I said, it's not a you know, great big DX machine, but uh, it works and it works pretty good. So again, this is a model let me get it in there. 4RG62. And uh, this guy just snaps. There we go. It just snaps on here like so. We've got an earphone jack here in the back. And a turquoise back. So it's turquoise one. It's kind of nice looking radio. And of course it has a picture of the RCA Meatball logo and nipper. And this is an impact. So I'm not going to do it. But you can drop it and not break it. <laughs> yeah, right. We're not going to do that. Radio will break before the plastic. Well, it's got the... Nice little RCA Victor logo there. And it had a very nice leather patch. This is a little dirty. So I cleaned it up and I went over it with some uh, leather conditioner. It was probably overkill for this thing. And 
just kind of slides in place. And then you could either run this thing through here, or maybe you can, I don't know. But anyhow, snap it up in the... The snap ain't going. Oh, that's because the, there's a leather strap here that's kind of in the way. So let me get the work leather strap over this. I'll be able to snap this guy up. There we go. And there you have it. So this is this is a rather nice radio. So I was I was rather pleased to to get this. That's one radio I have. Let me show you the other radio while we're still. Uh... Yes, boys and girls, a Bulova, same company that used to make the watches. And I've never had a Bulova transistor. Uh, this particular one was made in Japan. I don't remember the model number here. The case was rather dirty. It had to be cleaned up and I had to go over this one a little bit as well. And now the case is in good looking shape. Um, the little bit I learned about this radio is, is a, I saw I saw this in, in white. I didn't see any of these in red. But it says on, on the bottom here, very small letters. See if I can read it. Made in, made under build and engineering supervision in Japan. That's what that lettering says there. It's got a little go arrow showing that this is the volume knob. The tuning knob is here in the front. Very attractive radio. And uh, let me see if I can get this opened up here so you can see the, the insides. There we go. As you can see, it just takes a little 9-volt battery. Um, this had two 10 microfarad capacitors. I'm trying to remember where they were. I think they were down down in this corner here somewhere uh, that were bad. There was a couple other capacitors. There was three other capacitors I tested good. So we got a ferrite, nice ferrite rod antenna up here. A very large ferrite rod for the size of the radio. And as a result, this radio is actually pretty sensitive and selective for a 7 transistor. That the RCA was an 8 transistor and I'm afraid that this Bulova really kind of blows it away. So the volume control well, actually this is the tuning here. You can see the tuner moving around. Turn this on. Because what Buffalo has done the last four has been very impressive. You know what we got coming up next, Zach? That's uh, WFAN 660 yes. in New York. Much more sensitive and selective than the RCA. I was, I, I wouldn't have gone. Typically, I wouldn't have gone out of my way to buy one of these, but uh, I, I was rather impressed with the the quality of this radio. It, it's, it's actually works very, very well. I didn't even try to align it. I was just so amazed how well it worked right out of the box. Um, initially, this had a couple of problems. When I turned it on. Um, you could barely hear any audio out of it at all, and it was very um, uh, distorted. So uh, what I had to do was basically just go over to caps. I found two bad caps. I replaced them to two 10 microfarad caps, and uh, it woke this thing right up. I think one was at 6 volts, the other one was at 10 volts, and I had those. The other thing is, you hear that click for the on-off switch? Well... There's a piece of spring steel. I would have to take this knob off to show you. But there was a piece of spring steel that wasn't located right. So I had to kind of finagle the spring steel back to where it should be. And then the then the on-off switch now works. So I don't know how that happened, but it did. But now this thing works uh, rather well, and I'm very, very happy with this one. So this is going to stay in my uh, collection when I get the cover back on it and uh, this cover was really dirty but you know what it has some loose stitching in the front here in these corners but after I cleaned it up it actually cleaned up quite well and this thing is just it, it just looks like it belongs right in that right in that pouch and it'll just say Bulova. Um I'm not a watch guy but the little bit of research I did on, I don't know, I don't remember the model number on this, but apparently Bulova made this radio for a number of years. Even there were some with the, the earlier versions of this had a little bit different font on it. Uh, I saw these in white, uh, and I think some of these had like gold 
uh, trim around the dial and everything instead of this nice polished chrome. But uh, all in all, I'm really, really happy with uh, these two transistors. So uh, it's nice to get uh, some good stuff. Okay, folks, that's it for today. So uh, you can go back and uh, watch your football, watch your basketball, uh, watch, uh, watch a nice Christmas movie. I know there's too many Christmas movies to name them all. But uh, please like, share, and subscribe if you like what you see here. So... Uh, and tell your friends. And I hope everybody has a great holiday. So uh, we'll see you real, real soon. Take care. Bye.